This session we discuss operators. When you take any programming language, we can see different operators, different types of operators. We call those operators arithmetic operators, uh, increment and decrement operators, assignment operator, relational operator, logical operator, conditional operator, bitwise operator, and some programming language we have special operators. So in this session, we're going to discuss basic operators, such as arithmetic, increment, assignments, and so on. The next session I'll discuss relational and logical operators. Any programming language consists of arithmetic operators. So we use arithmetic operators to perform basic arithmetic operations, such as plus, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulation. Modular division basically returns reminder after the division. As everyone knows, plus operator add two variables. Minus operator, subtraction operator, basically subtract two numbers. And multiplication operator multiply them, division operator divide, and modular operator will module or take the modular two numbers. The for example, let's take this simple program. Initially we did have an integer variable defined called A and B. Also there is a variable called C. Initial value of A and B 9 and 4. So first uh, statement we add A to B and answer is assigned to C. So this is additional operator, the plus operator. So the computer performed this side first. So it add value of A to B and the result will be assigned to C. So this one is not considered as equal sign in computing language, especially C, so that Consider as assignment operator. That means result of this operation on this right side will, will be assigned to the left side. So after we add those numbers, A and B, so in the printf, simple printf statement here, we'll print the result C. So it's a A plus B equal. So these things will print on the terminal as it is and place of percent HD will be replaced by the value of C. So then we will get output something like that, A plus B equal, and then value of C will be printed here. So in this example, A is nine, B is four, A plus B is 13. So similarly, A is uh, nine, B is four, A minus B is five, we get five. So in this multiplication operator, A multiply B, we get 36. And this is a division operator, A divide B. So you see, we get the answer two. So here what happens, when you divide A and B, basically nine by four, it is two point something, right? So, but the, Decimal is omitted by the answer. Why? Because after this, after this calculation, the result we assign to the integer. So integers cannot hold decimal values. So what's happened with this assignment operator? After this operation, when we assign the result to the other side of variable C, it's automatically dropped 
the decimal part. So we only get the integer part of it, that is two here. So in the third, we do A mod B. That means when you divide A and B, this modular operator takes the remainder. So if nine divide four, the remainder is one. So for example, if let's say A is 10, is 10 divide four or 10, sorry, a, a, t, nine mod B is basically one. Let's say this is 10, 10 mod B, B is, let's say B4, 10 mod, 10 mod four is T2. So this is a reminder when we divide it by a number. So then we got one. So you can run this program yourself and see you should get this output. In the C and some other programming language like Java has two interesting operators called it as increment and decrement operator. Increment operator represent by two plus signs. So that says increase the value of the variable by one. Decrement operator represent by two minus signs. It says decrease the value by one. These two operators are what we call it as honorary operators. It has, its meaning of that is it's, it's applied to a single operand. Operand means single variable. So if you have plus minus like operator, there are two operands. So plus plus and minus minus, there are no two operands. It's, it applies to single operands or single variable. So for example, in this example, there are two integer variable called A and B, the value of 10 and 100, and there are two floating point numbers, 10.5 and 100.5. So when you apply plus plus operator to A, so value of A will be increased by one. Because of that, we get the results 11. So when you apply minus minus operator to B, the initial value is 100, it will be reduced by one. So the answer is 99. So when you apply plus plus operator to the floating point number C, initial value is 10.5. Since plus plus increase it by one, we get 11.5. So similarly, decrease operator will decrease the 100, 100.5 100, 100 like that's to 99.5. This plus plus operator can apply to the prefix or postfix. So when you apply it in front, that's how it works. So when you apply that after the variable, so then what's happened? Whatever the operation will execute first and then the plus plus will work. I'll discuss, I will show that example later on. So then, C-like programming language has what we call it as assignment operators. So basic assignment operator is equal sign. So for example, this means assign the value of B to A. So, Similarly, we, we have different assignment operators. What we call it as plus equal, minus equal, multiply equal, divide equal, and modular equal. So plus equal, we write like that. When we expand, that is something like that. This says, please add variable, value of variable A to B and assign the result back to A. So that is the meaning of this. So minus equal B means, please reduce B from value of A and assign the value back to A. So similarly, A multiple equal sign B says multiply A and B and assign back the results to A. So this is divide A and B, assign back the results to A. So this, this takes A modular B and assign it to A. 
So those operators we call it as assignment operators. So for example, so we have here a variable phi, integer a equal phi, and then there is a c. We assign value of a to c, then a and b both become phi. So then here we print that c value of c, you see it goes phi. And similarly, when you plus equal a, that means we add c to a, both values are phi. When you add them together, answer is 10, 10 will be assigned to C. So when you print C, we get 10. So then it says C minus A here. So value of C is 10. When you subtract A from that, C become again fine. So this says C multiply A and assign back to C. So both C and A are 5. 5 multiply 5 is 25. It's 25 assigned to C. So you see we got 25. Similarly, A, A divide A, C divide A, C is now 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So 5 will be assigned to C. So answer of C is 5. So here say, phi c is phi now c modular a is actually zero there are no reminders so then zero will be assigned to c so answer is c so that's how assignment operators works so in addition to that i say there are logical relational operators and so on in this section instead of those i'll consider bitwise operators after the arithmetic operators. Basically, bitwise operators applies to the bits of uh, data. So there are a set of bitwise operators available in most of the common programming languages. So this ampersand signs represents bitwise and dash represent bitwise O. This symbol represent bitwise exclusive O and this symbol represents which is complement two symbols like two less than symbols represent represent bitwise shift. So the symbol in the other side represent shift right. Let's try to understand how it works. So for example, assume there are two integers called 12 and 15. When you write the 12 in binary form, it is 1100. Zero, zero. It's in binary. So when you write 25 in binary form, that's, we get it that. So bitwise and means we do and operation to each and every bits of these two numbers. So for example, when you do and operation to the each bit, so we have 0, 1. Zero, one in the end operation is zero. So then we get zero, zero. Zero, zero, end operation is zero. So here we get one, zero. It also zero. So when you see one, one is one. So in the end operation, you know, if both bits are one, we get the results one. If all other combinations like zero, one, one, zero, 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 all those other combinations we get zero. So because of that, in the end operation, when you do end with these two numbers, we get the results like that. So this is equal to a. So for example, if you write this code and assign it 12 to a and 25 to b, and then apply a and b, you will definitely get the output eight. So now let's have a look bitwise operator. So let's take the same two numbers, integers. Operators, when you apply O to each bit of data, so it get ones, any of these bit one. So for example, if zero one, result is one. When the two bits are zero, result is zero. One zero, we get one. When two bits one, one also it's ones. And zero one also one. 
So our final results, we get this pattern, this bit pattern that is equal to 29 in decimal. So, so when you write that program and runs it, you may see 29 as output after we apply A O B. So this is bitwise operator. Similarly, we have some other bitwise, interesting bitwise operators. So this symbol represents bitwise exclusive O. Exclusive O applies to two bits. So when zero and exclusive O zero, result is zero. Zero exclusive O one, result is one. One exclusive O zero, result is one again. One exclusive O one, result is zero. So for example, in the operators, one one knows no zero. Exclusive operator, one one is zero. If operator one one is one, sorry, in the operator one one is one, but exclusive operator applies to two bit like one one, it gets zero. So that's the difference between O and exclusive O. So for our two numbers, 12 and 15, when you do the exclusive O, actually here, so it's zero one one, zero zero zero, one zero one, one one it gets zero, zero one it gets one. So the result of exclusive of this, of this is 21. Actually, this symbol is, should be exclusive of this. So there was a mistake on the slide. So in the previous, we have O operator, we get 29. It, this is O, and this should be exclusive of this one. So there was a mistake on the slide. So this is exclusive O. So when you do exclusive O here, result is 21. So you can run this program to verify that. You may see you get 21. So let's have a look. Bitwise complement operator. Complement operator is the reverse of the bits. So when you apply complement to this binary pattern that is number 35, it inverts the bit. So for example, one becomes zero, zero become one. So this is 35 in binary format. So when you apply complement operator to this binary number, so it's reverse the bits. One becomes zero, one becomes zero, zero become one. So this is equivalent to 220 in decimal. So when you run this program, so you might see you get this 36 and 11 as the output because this is not plus 12, this is minus 12. When you exclude you or the minus 12, it gets plus 11. So because in the minus numbers, it's there is a number representation in computer. So it, we represent number in uh, what we call, if there are different representation types. So when you get a minus 12, basically there is a representation in binary form. When it get inverse, we get plus 11. So you can try those to see the results. So you see when you exclude your plus 35, we get minus 36, because it's reverse the bits order. Similarly, we have bit shifting operators in C. So this one shift the bits to the right by two positions. So if 212 is this, we here in, we say, let's shift these bits by two positions. So, so when you shift that, you see these two zeros at the right side will be throw away. And this becomes the least significant bit. And in the most significant bit side, it's insert zeros, like shifting from this direction to that direction. So this says shift 212 by seven positions. So when you shift all seven bits out, so this bit become one here and all bits zeros. If you fit, uh, shift this 212 by eight positions, everything becomes zero. So if you shift zero here, 
So nothing will happen. So no shift. So we get the same number. Uh, this is mis shifting. So this is a bit right shifting. Similarly, we can do bit left shifting. In the left shifting, shift the bits to the other side. So in the 212, this is the number. When you shift that to the other side, so left side, bit by one, so you see it's inserted zero here. So when you shift bit by zero, nothing will happen. So when you shift the bit by four positions, you see there are four zeros at to the right side, and then this two is already exist, and the rest will be shift to the other side. So we get the answer of 3392. So you can see that by doing this simple program. So you still doesn't know about these four loops and so on. So we will introduce and I'll show this demo because of that, I will show it later on. So what you should understand is there are different set of operators, what we call it as binary operators, sorry, bitwise operators, which applies these operators, we apply these operators to the bits of the numbers. In addition to that, C has some additional other operators. So one operator we commonly use is a comma operator. So for example, if you want to get, want to initialize several variables with same type, we can separate those with comma operators. Like we define a variable called A, it is integer, and there is a variable called C, integer, but we assign the value phi at the definition, and then we get another variable called D. Those variables separated by comma operator. By the way, when you define a variable in C, it is a good practice to always assign a value to the variable. Otherwise, this variable may have random value. So Java-like programming language, when you define a variable, compiler itself assigns zero to the variable. But C, that may not happen. So because of that, when you assign the A, so it has random value. So if you want to put it into zero, you have to assign zero to that. Because of that, it is good practice. Usually, we give an initial value to each and every variable when you're defining it. Otherwise, sometimes we might get unexpected results. Size of operator in C programming language returns the size of the variable. So like memory size, if it is an integer, usually four bytes, and if it is a character, applies to size of, it is a one byte, like that. And then C has an operator called an ternary operator. So it's represented by question mark and two dots. So that is equal to if else condition, since you still doesn't know what it is, I'm not going into detail of that. So those operators, you may automatically learn when you move on. So that's all about this, so, uh, this session, but let me show you some programs to understand this, how some of these operators works. So uh, we will start maybe with a few of those basic operators, and then we can move on to the other operators, all right. Uh, let me uh, take my terminal here and I will uh, share the terminal. That's much better. Right. So you can see my terminal. So there I will maybe open uh, uh, my C compiler as a uh, using docker start command docker start minus a i i have already run the docker image here uh, and the name of that image is gcc 
I start that. So the GCC Docker started on my terminal. So let me go to some folder in my home directory. Uh, so my home directory map to uh, the directory of this course. Uh, and I go to the program and maybe I go to the lecture uh, three folder, right? So there you see uh, some programs I have written. Uh, so maybe I will open uh, some uh, C program, like maybe I say V, V I using V I editor. I use, I offer a program called, maybe I create a program called uh, operator op.c. So I will write a new program into and then I do int name uh, and then I define uh, into integer variable called a and assign the value maybe 12 to it and then put a comma operator and create a variable called b and maybe assign the value 4 to it and then put a comma operator and give a variable c and maybe assign the value 0 to it and then terminate the statement with semicolon. After that, I write a statement like that, a plus b. That means add a and b and assign to c, right? So using then printf, I want to print the result. Uh, so maybe I print the result only, that is c. Right, and then return, return zero. Okay, so that is end of my program. Right, so I write and quit. So there is a program called op.c. I compile it, it get compiled. I run it without file. So you see I get the answer 16, but it didn't go to the next line because I didn't tell the system to do so. So let me tell that to the system that means, so maybe I say, please go to the new line, slash and present new line. Similarly, maybe I would like to print the value of A and B. So for there, I put like that. So here I want to put value A and then plus sign, and then value B I want to put, and then equal sign, and then answer. So then I put print say A, B, and C. Value of A will be put it there, value of B will be put it there, C will be put it there, then we might see value of a plus b equal sign and value c as output so and after that it's a new line so this part is called formatted string you know right i quit the program compile back and run it with top file you see 12 plus 4 is 16. similarly i can apply any other operators so let me apply the module operator. So for example, in case I want to do modular, so here should be mod. So maybe I put, uh, instead of four, I put maybe five, 12 mod five. That means when you divide 12 by five, reminder part, you know, C. So instead of plus sign, maybe I put mod sign on the terminal. So then I quit it and then compile the program and run that. You see, <coughs> 12 mod 4, basically 5, I made a mistake. Let's see what's, what's 
show you that. Okay, so here, so you see, so here, again, the same sign. So you see there is an issue because it take it modular, the percentage sign is take it as a modular operator. Plus when you put percentage sign is expect something here, like format a district. So we cannot use, we, let's say we want to print that. So there we have a character called escape character. So we have to put escape character and then do this, then it may not consider it as the meaning of this. Then let's see it works. I send it and I combine and run that. You see? I didn't uh, get the results correctly. So so basically here, as you see, this is caused the problem as So, uh, because if you put mod character here, that mod character will take it and expect this some symbol here, like a, a format. So if you don't do that, it's basically, it may not take on correctly. So if you want to print this, We usually use escape character. So, but it didn't work. I mean, I will check and let you know later on. So maybe instead of that, I symbolize say more, and I write that, and then I compile here, and then run that. So you see, it's print twelve mod five equal two. So that's how module operator works. Similarly, I will, uh, I want to show you this increment and decrement operator here with the same example. So maybe, you know, I have uh, these uh, values. Let's apply, let's do that. Let's say C assignment for plus plus A. And then I want to print value of a here as well as value of uh, C like here. I want to print value of A and value of C. So not B, A and C on the terminal after this plus plus operator like here. So initial value of A is 12. When you add plus plus, it increment by one. Then value of A become one. Uh, increment by one, it become 13. So then value of, value of A become 30. Then 13 will be assigned to C. So then value of C and A both are 13. Should be 13. Let's see. I compile it and then run. So you see, both are 13. Now, I apply this, we apply this increment operator to the prefix. So we apply it as postfix, like after the A. Then let's see what's happened. I compile it and then run that. You see, a is 13, but C is still 12. Why so? So that is the difference, the postfix and prefix. So for example, if you apply this honorary operator to the front, so then what the system do? The system at, apply this plus plus operator to A, then increase the value of A by one and assign it back to C. So when you apply this plus plus operator after the variable name, that is postfix. So then what happened? 
value of a will be assigned to c first and then it increases by one so this assignment work first before this plus plus so that is the meaning of force fix so for example let's say we do uh, this what would be the answer of c so the initial value is 12 then answer of c is still 12 but a will be become 11 because after assigning value of a will decrease by one so when i compile and run that program you might see that so you see a become 11 but c is still 12 so when you do prefix like that then a reduced by one and then assign to c so then both become 11 i combine and then i run that you see both become 11 so that's the difference between applying this plus plus or minus minus operator to prefix and postfix if it is prefix like that so it applies to the variable and assign back to the left if it is postfix that is after the variable name then the assignment goes first and then the operator works second so that's how it works okay with that i would like to stop this session so we will continue the discussion from the next session onwards